We pick up our study of Ephesians chapter 5 in verse 5 uh, this morning. He, Paul has just been talking about sinful behavior that should not even be named among Christians. Uh, he says to us that thanksgiving should uh, characterize the believer's heart rather than sinfulness. He wants us to walk in uh, imitation of God and, uh, and of Christ in love. And then he comes to verse 5 and he says this, For this you know with certainty that no immoral or impure person or covetous man who is, is an idolater has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. It's a very powerful verse of Scripture, and he wants us to know something with absolute certainty. And he returns to some of the sinful behaviors he had talked about a little bit earlier, immorality and impurity and covetousness or greed. And uh, he says concerning these people, and they're idolaters, he says, that is their, 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 their hearts are, and their actions are demonstrating that they're not following God, they're, they're living for self. But he says concerning such people, they, uh, they do not have an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. And so therefore, this is a powerful verse, and, and a lot of people have really struggled with the meaning of that. Does that mean that if we sin in immoral ways, that if we sin in, in materialism or covetousness, that we are not Christians? And I think we have to be careful here because we all know that we sin in, in all sorts of manners. Matter of fact, he wouldn't be talking about these things if that was not possible for the Christian to do. So he's not talking about a person who sins in these ways. He's talking about a person whose life is characterized by these sins, by these behaviors. It is evidence that they're not truly believers, even though they claim to be. It is evidence that they have no inheritance then in the kingdom of God. To understand this better, we need to turn back to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and verse 10, or verse 9, actually, it says this, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor idolaters, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. So he's saying the same thing there, just a little bit differently. He is saying if these types of sins characterize your life is if this is who you are at the core of your being then you will not inherit the kingdom of God these things are evidence that we do not know him now of course he goes on to say here but some uh, such were some of you but you have been washed and you have been sanctified and you've been justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God so he says you don't have to stay in those sins as you look at your life as you look at your own sinfulness, then you recognize a need for repentance and turning to him for salvation. And when that happens, you are, as he says here, you are washed and you are sanctified and you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That takes us back to our passage of scripture, though, in Ephesians. And we move on quickly to verse 6. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. So people are going to try to get around this very clear teaching. They're going to tell you, well, you're a Christian anyway. Even though your lifestyle is characterized by all these sins, which has been characterized as idolatry, he says uh, they're going to tell you that you're saved because you prayed a prayer and you walked an aisle or whatever you did. He says, I don't want you to be deceived. I want you to know with certainty that these kinds of behaviors, if that is at the core of your being, if this is what you are, uh, this, it is a description of a person who does not know God. And he says, you know what? The, the, the God's wrath comes because of these kinds of sins. His wrath is poured out now, according to Romans chapter 1, on those who live these sinful lifestyles. And for all eternity, there will be judgment on those who have refused to receive him and whose lives have been characterized by these things. So he says, and that's why he says it, because, because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. What does he mean? He means if God's wrath and judgment is going to come on people who live this way, then why and how can a Christian continue to live this way? How, how can you proclaim yourself a follower of Christ when you're living like those whose God's wrath is one day going to come on? It doesn't compute. It, it's not logical. It doesn't fit. So if your life is such, you live such a life that uh, that you're living like unbelievers, 
upon whom the wrath of God will come, then you can be pretty certain you're not a believer yourself. And you need to take a really close look at your own life. And so he's calling us to that kind of examination. He says in verse 5, he wants to be us to be certain about these things. Don't be deceived because these are clear things in his word. Christians should act like Christians, even though we fumble around many times and sin often. Still, at the very core of our being should be the Holy Spirit who leads us to righteousness. This shouldn't scare us. It should give us a wonderful day in the Lord, and I hope it does for you today.